2016 Coca-Cola Zero League of Legends Champions Korea Summer Round 1. Hey guys, welcome to week two, day one of the LCK Summer Split. I'm Achilles. This is, uh, I'm used to saying Papa Monty. Papa Monty. I got Monte Cristo with me this time. It's been a while. You and I haven't cast together for months at this point, really. Yeah, well, it's been a while between seasons, so what can you say? We're into our new week right now. We've got our nice little cozy room to yeah. cast out of. <laughs> Just kind of like in a little bit of a box at the moment, but it's all good. We're coming to you live, of course, from the OGN E Stadium, just in a different little studio. But tonight, we have some good games for you as well. It's going to be Samsung versus Africa Freaks. Both teams have started off this split pretty strong with 2-0 finishes. Yeah, obviously, uh, a 2 over the Rocks Tigers is much more impressive than a 2-0 over Longju yes. Gaming. Africa did look strong in their wins. Uh, Rocks did look also very lost. Yes, they did. Absolutely. In that particular series, the pick and bans were bizarre to say the least. Not a lot of synergy. I think hopefully we'll see Rocks bounce back a little bit stronger. Looks like they may have had a bit of a misread on the meta in their first series. Yeah, the Swain for Smeb not really working out. It did get its first competitive win, though. The Swain the is very day. strong. Oh, yes. It, it is very strong, but you do have to play around it, and uh, they didn't exactly do that. I think they overloaded on AP in that game. But enough about the Rocks Tigers. Let's talk about Samsung and what they did well, because coming into that broadcast or that first match, they uh, they went back to some of their roots. They went back to the Varus and the Victor, which are big comfort picks for Crown. Yeah. And they played, especially in game two, a very good pick composition or poke composition rather with the uh, Ezreal and the Varus and Bard. So that was pretty exciting to see. Yeah, his Varus was really crazy. I mean, the damage figures of both of those games for Crown were through the roof. He had 57, 56 or fifty seven thousand for the one game, about forty eight for the second one. It was. It was pretty absurd, and I know I know you have a good figure to go along with that statistic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What's interesting about the matchup tonight is, yes, the sample size is very small. Each of these teams have only played two games. But so far, we have the two top damage per minute uh, players in the league going head-to-head. -head. So that will be, of course, with Crown. He did, on average, between two games... 1,195 <laughs> damage per minute, which that's is just, just ridiculous. That, that's absolutely absurd. And yes, he was playing Victor, and he was playing Varus, and we expect high DPM statistics on these particular champions, but it's still an impressive feat to pull that average off over two games. On the other side for the Afrika Freaks, we have Sangyun, who's number two at DPM at 810. Now, this, of course, was bolstered by the fact that he was playing a late-game hurricane uh, Caitlyn. That was just completely untouched in the back line, just yeah, firing just off headshots every couple <laughs> seconds. Basically just free autoing. So yeah. obviously there are external factors here, but certainly Crown and Song Yoon had outstanding performances in their series. Yeah, and I think you also mentioned Ruler was sitting at number three. Yes, he is. So there's <laughs> actually the top three <laughs> biggest uh, damage per minute carries in this game. And Ruler, uh, we didn't get to see too much from him in the game from Samsung. Overall, Samsung just played well as a unit. There wasn't necessarily a, a massive standout uh player, at least in my opinion. Everybody just seemed to be on the same page, and they played very cohesively as a team. Uh, CC Chaining was just off the charts. I mean, there was when in the first game when Peanut played Echo Jungle, which was very bad. Uh, <laughs> he tried to go for Dragon Steals several times, but every time he just went over the wall with a face dive, they locked him up, and he couldn't even use the ultimate to snap back. It was just wonderful performance by these guys. You have to see what, what's going to happen going up against Afrika, who are also looking pretty damn good. Yeah, and what I loved about Afrika last week was that we saw some really interesting pick compositions. We'll take a look at our MVPs first up before we go into that. Yeah, again, a little, really limited sample size at the moment, but Hachani going to be resting in first place, got two MVP finishes with his games just the other day against MVP with that heartbreaker of a finish uh, for MVP. Couldn't kill the Nexus quite in time. And our early uh, KDA's coming in. So we'll be Trace topping the charts right now from Jin Air, who obviously had a surprisingly aggressive and um, short, we will say, game time in their first best of three, coming out of the gate strong. Score right now on top in the jungle, in spite of the fact that KT had some pretty messy matches. Yeah, but score, you have to give him credit, really saved the day with that Lambs for Spite at the yeah. end of 
the game against MVB, so he was still on point from time to time. This is when it starts getting a little bit interesting with these KDAs as they've kind of skyrocketed due to the start of the season. Tempt looking really strong in the mid lane for ESC Ever. Yeah, I, I really like what we saw what we saw from Ever in their first series. It was the same kind of skirmishing, aggressive team that we've come to know. Yeah, and Song Yoon right now, I believe he has the high, he has the highest KDA right now in the LCK with 24. Big part of that, that Caitlyn game, as we were mentioning uh, just a few minutes ago. Pilot coming in close behind him with 21, but we need to see a little bit more from Jin Air before we can really get a gauge on where they're going to be this split. We're, I know Papa Smithy and I talk, and we just don't know how good Jin Air is right now. Yeah. Oh, I was wrong. Snowflower. Yeah, that's right. And Snowflower, he did have an outstanding series in their wins over Longju, particularly his Bard game was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, just chaining very yeah. well with what we saw, some nice top echo play in that game from Iksu. Yep. And there are standing so far. We've had a bunch of 2-0s. Yep. SK Telecom 10th place. I don't know what's going on this <laughs> split, Monty. Things are crazy.